You wanna hear a nightmare? Nightmares come to life. Hi, my name is Rick. I'm 21, and I never really believed in the paranormal or urban legends. I don't really believe in anything for that matter. Religion isn't factual, and the followers are stupid. Though I digress. This isn't why I'm posting this today. I'm posting this to tell you about a creature. A creature that is highly dangerous. A creature known as Big Philly. I just gotten a job at a factory that provides wooden crates for many businesses. It paid well considering this was my first real job outside of fast food restaurants. My job was fairly easy considering all I had to do was cut plywood and use the forklift to gather more when I ran out. Our workplace was a wide warehouse filled with saws and power tools, while the other warehouse next door was filled with plywood and other lumber cuts. I hadn't been working there long before I kept hearing of the infamous Big Philly. You know those so-called legends or jokes of a ghost who explained why certain things went missing? Well that's what I figured Big Philly was at first. Just a random explanation for missing drill bits or a misplaced plank of wood. At least that's what I thought until earlier today. I had to get some plywood from the other warehouse like usual. So I grabbed the forklift and drove over to the warehouse. I entered from the back entrance and drove to the nearest pile of plywood I saw. I lifted it up with the forks of the forklift when a loud crack of metal sounded behind me. What the fuck is that? I said surprised. I turned around and saw a fallen bulkhead with a dozen drill bits scattered on the floor. I sighed and got out of the forklift to investigate. Before when anyone asked me why I did some cliche white people in a horror movie trope, I didn't think nothing of the fallen bulkhead. If anything, I wanted to get some of the drill bits since so many went missing in the shop. As I was bent over picking up the drill bits, the hairs on my arms seemed to stand up. I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling of someone, something, watching me. When I seemed to have grabbed enough bits, I stood up, but what met my glance sent chills down my spine. In the far corner, where no sunlight touched, there were reflective eyes trained on me. I froze. What the hell was that? The eyes were too far away to tell a silhouette or body, but the eyes were enough to disturb me. I had to tell someone there was someone, or something, in there. I forced my legs to run and dropped every drill bit on my arms, then literally sprinted into the forklift. I floored it to the shop and began sputtering and yelling trying to tell all of my coworkers. I think I saw him. I think I saw Big Philly. Everyone was shocked at first. No one said a word. They seemed to be as shocked as I was, when suddenly they all erupted in laughter. My face burned red. St stop it! I know what I saw over there! I yelled. My coworkers began to walk off laughing as I stood there disgruntled and embarrassed. My only friend I had there was an older man named Frank. He was around his fifties and had been working there the longest. He walked to me with a warming smile. Tough crowd, huh? He joked. I gave him a serious look. You believe me, right, Frank? Frank chuckled. Come on, you know. He stopped his sentence as he looked deep in my eyes. He looked around and pulled me away so no one could hear us. He sighed once again and pulled me close. You can't blurt stupid shit like that out, kid. I was confused. Huh? What do you mean? Frank rubbed his temples and looked around again. Big Philly is real, Rick. What you saw over there wasn't your imagination. Usually, we have more stacks of wood for him to hide behind or something, but I guess we'd had more orders than usual. My mind swirled. Hold up. Our, our bosses know we have some creature in the warehouse? Frank looked around again before continuing. You can bet your ass they know. Hell, they even covered up the shit a decade or so back. 
Two friends of mine were found dead over there after a late night project. Both were supposed to close up shop, yet they were found the next morning mangled with their flesh separated from their bone. They weren't eaten. Nah, just gruesomely mauled and lacerated. My heart rate increased and my hand began to quiver. Frank continued with a sigh. Those poor bastards didn't know what hit them. Hell, not even the company knows. Yet they covered it up with just a work accident and pushed heavy money on the victims' families to stay quiet. My eyes widened in horror. Just thinking of being so close to a creature that could easily kill me almost sent me into a panic attack. My breathing became gasped but stopped when our shift leader Jake seemed to appear out of nowhere. He had a huge smile on his face. A smile that seemed to scare me more than the idea of a man-killing monster. He put his hand on Frank's shoulder. What are you guys talking about? He asked, still keeping his creepy smile. Frank smiled uneasily and lied. I was just telling the kid about some old war stories. Jake looked at me. The color had drained from my face, and beads of sweat were forming on my forehead. I nodded in agreement, but I wasn't a good liar. A blind man could tell I was just going along with it. Jake nodded, obviously not buying it. Right. Frank, come with me. Management wants a word with you, he said. I watched as Frank reluctantly walked into the main office. Jake turned to me and smiled even harder. Did he scare you with his big Philly tails? I was still so scared I nodded like a dumbass. Jake shook his head. Oh, what a character. You're an atheist, right? How can you let such a childlike legend fool you? I looked at the ground and thought a second. Mm, he, he was right. A creature like that can't possibly live and sustain itself in that type of environment. Especially with no way out for food or water. My nerves eased and I took a deep breath. Thanks, Jake. I needed that. He nodded and patted my shoulder. Glad to be of service. I watched as he walked away feeling stupid. How did I let such a story fuck with me? I shook the idea from my head and began cutting plywood again. I never saw Frank for the rest of the shift. I figured he had to leave early for some reason. I paid it no mind and finished my duties. I was about to leave when one of the older workers pulled me aside when I grabbed my coat. The boss wants us both to stay late. You know, close up shop and make some extra cuts for some future orders. I nodded and put my coat back. I didn't mind. Hell, money was money. I went back to cutting wood as he built the crates. The shop was so empty and quiet after everyone left. I almost had to remind myself I was working as the hours went by. The clock struck seven when my plywood got low. I eyed the forklift and hesitated. Stop being ridiculous. Monsters aren't real. Right? I hopped in the forklift and rode over to the warehouse. The light inside was on, but that didn't change the fact it was still eerie in there. Like always, I found a stack of plywood and was about to lift it up when I heard a familiar voice. I turned my head to the darkness where Frank's voice came from. I stopped. Frank? I said that, but there was no reply. I did hear the shuffling of feet. First you try to scare me shitless with your story, now you're trying to prank me? I know I'm new, but damn, cut me some slack. There was no reply again, just a shuffling of feet. I sighed and turned the forklift towards the dim area of the warehouse. I flicked on the light and drove over expecting to find Frank laughing at me. To my horror, I saw blood stains smeared on the concrete floor. I slowed the forklift examining the whole scene. There were many splotches of blood. Some were old and brown, some were fresh and crimson. It looked as if people were butchered with a hammer over there. Handprints and trails of blood let me know people were being dragged by someone or something. The putrid smell of rotten flesh hit my nose that made me gag. Just what the hell had been happening here? I searched all around with my eyes when I found Frank, or what was left of him. He was a slaughtered mess, 
His spine jutted out of his back, dripping dark red blood. His skull was smashed into the concrete, and his body had many holes and slashes in it. My teeth chattered. What the fuck? How, 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 if, if Frank is dead, who the fuck did I hear? My answer was soon answered by a figure that slowly walked out from behind a pile of plywood. This, this thing was about 10 feet tall. It had a face that was neither human nor animal. Flesh hung off of its bony face. It what seemed to have, it, it had like a huge beak. And portions of flesh on its face kept changing skin tone from pale to super dark. Its body was skinny, almost looking malnourished. Overall, its body was very pale, with lanky arms and talons on top of its fingers. Its legs were bent abnormally, but nonetheless looked muscular. The creature's beak hung open loosely and its eyes were blank sockets. It stared at me for what seemed like years. I had no doubt in my mind. This. This thing was Big Philly. I gulped trying to regain my senses. I slowly shifted the forklift into reverse, then floored the damn thing. I shot back so quickly I almost flew off the forklift. I had to get the fuck away from this place as soon as possible. To my surprise, Big Philly was inhumanly fast. The creature was beside the forklift in two steps. Then it slapped the side of the forklift, causing it to fly like a little toy. I flung out and landed on some lumber forcefully. I wheezed trying to get the air back that I've lost. I grimaced but opened one eye to see it walking in an awkward way towards me. I looked around for a weapon, but the most I saw was a jagged 2x4 beside my leg. I reached for it and yelled, Get the fuck away from me, you freak! The creature looked at me as if confused. Then its beak moved as it spoke. It said. My eyes went wide. It mimicked my voice perfectly. Did it mimic Frank just now? So I could be its next victim? I trembled as it got closer to my face. I couldn't move at all. My fucking body was frozen. I watched as this monster's face began to morph. The rotting flesh on its face molded and contorted until its face was an exact copy of mine, down to the last freckle. The shock of it all jump-started my body to move. I jammed my 2x4 in the creature's face, my face, and ran away as fast as I could outside towards my car. I floored the thing, leaving the shop and Big Philly behind. That was 30 minutes ago. I'm now hiding in my closet posting the story to anyone who can possibly explain what Big Philly is. I'm scared. I keep hearing a knock on that door. But the voice is my own.